Hi, welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Justin Riley, and it's an exciting day for us here because we have Let Me Introduce You Speed Dating here with us. And uh, we have Linda Brixen and Judy Daller with us in the studio. Welcome to the program. Thank, thank you. you. So and thank good. you for having us. No, it's yes. so good to have you guys here. I'm going to let you guys uh, take the reins here and tell us a little bit about what Let Me Introduce You Speed Dating is and um, what does it do for the dating community? Let me introduce you um, is a five minute speed dating service and individuals who attend would be sitting across from each other, uh, typically about 20 members at a time, and then they ask questions and then they rotate. Um, and what we do for the community is we give them another option besides internet dating, which is a little more scary, I think. You meet the person up front and you get to know them a little bit better in that time. So. Cool. That is correct. So we, uh, we, it's mm -hmm. kind of like what we've seen on TV before where people are sitting at tables yeah. and then a timer mm -hmm. dings after five minutes and then they all rotate. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Very cool. That's exactly. Very cool. Yeah. But uh, now tell me, what, what makes Let Me Introduce You speed dating different from other speed dating? Let Me Introduce You is different because, number one, we cater to the heterosexual community as well as the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. We like to think we're different because we are here for all walks of life. Cool, cool, yeah. very cool. So, so it, it offers kind of a, an option for, for those who maybe traditional speed dating is not, they don't feel like it's an option in other words. Absolutely. Very nice, very nice. You guys have uh, something called coaching sessions as part of Let Me Introduce You. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the coaching yeah. sessions? That's an optional service with a nominal fee, and people who choose it, what will happen is we will refer them to a hairstylist, a fashion consultant who can get them the best look, a makeup specialist. Um, you don't have to get that service, but it is something we provide, and we want to give you the best experience possible. Awesome. So, yeah. so people who want to put the, their best foot forward in terms of presenting the best image of themselves can right, utilize right. this as part of right. Let Me Introduce You. Correct. That's very neat. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Right. Is that mm -hmm. something that gets utilized pretty regularly? Do people make use of that? I think it's going to be more usable once the community knows about our coaching sessions. Sure. And we are a little different from the other speed dating events because sure. of that. We do offer the coaching. Very cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Primarily, what ages do you serve with Let Me Introduce You? We serve ages from 18 to 65, and we're contemplating going a little bit older yet. Okay, cool. So yeah. when you say a little bit older, how mm -hmm. old? Mm -hmm. Middle 70s. Okay, cool. Yeah. It would depend if they're comfortable going to speed dating. I don't know if the upper age groups are, but we would find that out yeah. as we went along. Sure, yeah. sure. How long have yeah. you guys been, how long has your website been up and, and running now? We've been in business about a month. Okay, well, oh, so pretty new now. Pretty new, <laughs> okay. but, yeah. but we've been in the planning stages and doing our marketing research mm -hmm. and for a long time. And is this, because uh, we were talking a little bit before the interview, is, is this, uh, is this a franchise operation? No. Because you mentioned that if people look up just, if they were to Google, let me introduce you, there'd be hundreds of other websites um, from all over the country mm -hmm. very much like it. So they'd have to specifically say, let me introduce you Wisconsin or WI. Correct. So mm -hmm. this is something that's an original idea from you guys. It is. I have been a matchmaker my whole life. <laughs> I've had many people get married mm -hmm. n into the dating world as well. and. Um, it just is something that came very natural for us. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sure that everybody is just uh, out there watching Talk of the Town right now, and they want to know how much this is going to cost. Can you tell us a little bit about the cost of this? Um, it's twenty nine ninety five, and then it is for the coaching. It's an additional amount, okay. um, which is totally optional. And I guess we didn't also add that when they do come to an event, we will hand them questions that they can ask, and mm -hmm. they can bring their own questions to ask. So we do try to give them the best help that we can for each event. Wonderful. So yeah. they can choose from either some scripted questions or right. they can bring their own questions Correct. or right. use both if they want Correct. to. Yeah. Very cool. Have you had an event yet? Mm -hmm. uh, we have one scheduled coming up. It's coming up? Can it's you tell our us? very first one. Do you know, mm -hmm. can you tell us when that's going to be? It's going to be on the 13th at um, Bourbon Street Grill. 
Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So November 13th? Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Time? Uh, 7 o'clock. 7, Seven o'clock. Yeah. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Linda and Judy, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank, thank you. you for having Check me. it out. It's uh, Let Me Introduce You <laughs> Speed Dating. And make sure you put the Wisconsin um, part in there as well. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Thank you. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're going to be talking about how to care for your pet. And I'm sitting here next to Jeff Weber from Wagon Tails Doggy Dude Ranch and the Fitchburg Veterinary Clinic. Jeff, welcome, welcome to the program. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate so, it. So great to have you with us today. Thank you. So, um, Wagon Tails and Fitchburg Vet is a, a very interesting business. Tell us um, what separates it from other businesses like it. It's one of those things where size really does matter. I mean, this is a big facility. Mm -hmm. It's 23,000 square feet dedicated for pets, pet care. Uh, we've got veterinary capability, we've got grooming, we've got daycare, we've got boarding, we've got acupuncture, we've got urgent care, we have got everything under one big roof. Pet? Acupuncture. Oh, yeah. And did you say one big wolf? <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Oh. <laughs> Appreciate it. Just a little pet humor there, folks. You can have that one for free. Um, so you provide a lot of different services, as you, as you mentioned just right. before. Um, why should pet owners, why is that something that they should be interested in? Well, just, again, because of all the things we provide, we're kind of a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you need grooming done, we're there. Uh, if you've got daycare, you want, you've got that. If you're going on a trip, you need boarding, we've got it. And what's nice about it is you can take care of grooming and shots. You can take care of anything you need mm -hmm. at one facility. Uh, we're friendly staff. You get to know the staff, the people, and it's kind of like hanging out. You're coming to take care of your pet. You come in the door. Everybody's greeted with a smile. If that talk needs to go to get... Uh, shots, we can take care of that if it needs anything. It's all there. So you don't have to go from here to there to there to take care of your pet. It really is a one-stop shop. It is a one-stop yeah. shop, yes. Tell us a little bit about the facilities you have at the veterinary clinic. Okay, the veterinary clinic is, I think, one of the better ones in the city. Uh, we've got two uh, surgical rooms. We've got dental uh, x-ray, uh, digital dental x-ray, I should say. Oh. We have digital regular x-ray. We have urgent care, so we've got a lot of capability there. We've got a great staff. Uh, we've got two full-time vets, two part-time vets. If a specialty thing comes up, we've got people on call for that. So there really is not a lot that can happen to your pet that we can't take care of at our vet facility. And urgent care is really big right now because if you need to go to an emergency facility, they're very expensive. And we try to get people in on those smaller items that happen on a weekend or on a night that they can be taken care of at by far less price. And so it's, it's really nice to have that as extra service. Sure, that's very cool. So you mentioned that you have two full-time, two part-time vets on staff. How many people total would you say that you have on staff over there? And, and also, what kinds of um, qualities do you look for when you're hiring people? We've probably got around 50 to 55 employees there between the vet facility and daycare boarding facility. And with that, it's a unique group of people because most of them are pet owners themselves. Mm. Um, they bring their pets in. If they're working, their pet gets to come in and go through daycare or whatever. Uh, the boarding facility is open to them as well. Um, so what we do is when we're hiring people, they've got to be... People come in and oh, I love animals, I love dogs. But when you really love a dog, you're willing to clean out cages or do whatever nonstop or whatever. So you've really got to love your pets. And these people do. They're very caring. They're sympathetic. Uh, we just had one of our... Uh, People had an issue with this pet, they volunteer time to help them out. And so it's a great group of people that work there. So every day is take your pet to work day then, kind of over there. It kind <laughs> of. I mean, we try to keep it to a little bit. Some of our staff have three, four, five dogs. Oh, sure. So it gets a little bit over much. Yeah. But we try to do what we can for all of our staff. Sure. So aside from the uh, facilities, the staff, and the services, what truly makes Wagon Tails and Fitchburg Veterinary Clinic unique? Not only do we get to provide all these services to our clients, but we also do go above and beyond. Uh, we have dog wash, which we do to benefit local shelters and 
rescue places and stuff like that. We also do, uh, we have uh, <coughs> one of our staff, a husband has epilepsy, so we did a benefit for that. Uh, we also donate to local charities. We make ourselves available to do things free for, uh, we work with Fetch out of Milwaukee area, and we do uh, go above and beyond to help take care of some of their dogs as well. So we're constantly, I don't say giving, but we're there to help when we can. Very cool. We just have a few seconds left. How mm -hmm. can viewers find out more about Wagon Tails Doggy Dude Ranch and the Fitchburg Veterinary Clinic? I'm trying to really expand that, our awareness on the social media. So we do have, obviously, websites uh, for both Wagon Tails and Fitchburg Vet. We also have Facebook for Wagon Tails. In fact, Wagon Tails Boarding is our Fitchburg's uh, for our vet side. Um, we also have uh, Google+. Plus. Uh, we're also doing stuff with Twitter. And my wife actually does a blog that I post on all those locations. So there's a lot of venues, areas that they can get a hold of us and see information about us in case they're looking to where they're going to take their pet for the next time. Jeff Weber, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Check them out, Wagon Tails Doggy Dude Ranch and Fitchburg Veterinary Clinic. It's all in the same place. We'll be right back with more Talk in the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm here with Ralph Middlecamp from the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Ralph, welcome to the program. Good morning. Great to have you here with us today. Good, glad to be with you. So, um, a lot of people are familiar with the St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores. Um, how do they fit into uh, the larger scope of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul? Sure, uh, it's probably our most visible aspect in, right. in Dane County. We've got six stores and we're about to open our seventh in Sun Prairie. And, and so people see the stores, they see the five trucks around town, they call for own pickups, so they see that or they shop with us. But uh, it's only part of what we do. Uh, we have charitable works of housing, a very large food pantry, uh, pharmacy. Uh, the thrift stores serve two functions. So we give things away right out of the stores. Uh, last year, about 10% of the clothing in our stores we actually give away to people. Uh, we gave about $250,000 of clothing to people in need right off the racks. Wow. We also give about the same amount of furniture to people uh, after we visit their homes if, they, if they're needing that. So we give uh, the product away, uh, which is important to us, but we also then use the revenue we generate beyond that to support all of our other programs. Uh, about half the funds that we need to run our housing, our food pantry, our, our pharmacy come from the retail thrift store profits. So it's a two element. And it also is recycling and, and it's a, the best use for any product is to reuse the product for its original use and you know uh, all thrift stores including St. Vincent Paul have been recyclers for years. Very cool. So speaking of your food pantry, um, obviously you op operate a very large food pantry. I gave away about a million dollars worth of food last year. Why do you think there's so many people who need help with food? Uh, food's an interesting element of, of people living in poverty or on the edge. Um, it, it's in a community like Madison, it's not like people need to starve, or, or, but if you think about even your own family budget, the last dollars you spend often are your food budget mm -hmm. dollars. So we have people living close to the edge. Rents are high. Uh, there are other things they need to do. It's, uh, it's a city where you almost need a car to get around mm -hmm. in. So if you've got a job or you have children to get uh, to different events, you have to pay your uh, utilities, you have to pay your rent, you have to pay all those other bills. And what you have left is your food budget. And if you have any little crisis at all, even if you're doing o almost okay, uh, you end up at the end of the month being short. And so we see, especially near the end of the month, our, our numbers go very high. So uh, it, food is uh, an element that's not discretion, but it's the, one of the last things you spend on food. It's, it's an also a thing that uh, we trust people with. Sometimes it's not giving them cash, but we know they need to eat and to give them food. We know it'll get back to their families. Sure. We were talking a little bit before the program started about uh, your charitable pharmacy that St. Vincent just opened up. Sure. Tell us how that's going. 
that's one of the unique things that we do here in uh, Dane County with St. Vincent de Paul. It's the first uh, standing, freestanding uh, charitable pharmacy in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we were vouchering uh, over $100,000 of prescriptions to, to local drug stores to people who really needed uh, critical drugs. They weren't taking them because they couldn't afford them. And we looked at other models that St. Vincent de Paul had around the country and decided we could actually hire a part-time pharmacist uh, and use volunteers from the UW Pharmacy School and some retired pharmacists and, and actually save money by just buying the drugs. And, and, and that allowed us to expand. So where we were at $100,000, $125,000 two years ago, we've doubled that and we're looking actually to almost $300,000 of uh, free drugs that we give to people who have, have no insurance and they're below 200% of the poverty line. Um, the Affordable Health Care Act has helped. Uh, many people, we, we actually aggressively worked to get rid of business <laughs> over the past <laughs> uh, year and many of the people we were helping before have moved on to more uh, dependable health care. Uh, so the cracks are smaller in the system but there's still sure. plenty of them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Dane County as a whole is a, a fairly prosperous community. Why, why do you find that there are so many people around here who still need your help? You know, probably my friends ask me the same question, and a lot of us travel in circles that we're not necessarily rubbing up against those folks, or mm -hmm. we see them, or we see the statistics. We haven't met them. And, uh, there are a lot of folks here that are, are trying hard. Uh, we've come out of a period of, 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 of some trouble with employment that's getting better in Dane County, but we have factors such as the rents are high. Um, we've got a lot of people moving to town, wanting to live in Madison, wanting to live in apartments, and uh, the people we serve are competing with those uh, people, so uh, they're paying higher rents, or if they live a ways out of the community to get the lower rents, then they're paying higher gas mileage. Uh, so things like food, medical expenses uh, are right on the edge. We also find some people who maybe have fixed incomes, but some of those uh, fixed incomes have, haven't kept pace with the real cost of living here in a community like Madison. Sure. Well, Ralph Middlecamp, I want to thank you so much for being a part of us, uh, part of our show today. And you can find out more by uh, checking out St. Vincent de Paul's website. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town where we will be talking about rugby. Stick around. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We are talking rugby today. If those of you who are fans of Girl Talk will have seen at least one of these guys on Girl Talk, we have the Wisconsin Rugby Club here. We have Adam Thimming and Max Zukowski. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So good to have you back on CW. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask each of you this first question. Tell us uh, about your current role in the Wisconsin Rugby Club. Well, uh, I am the current club president. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, was an active player for a couple of years and have transitioned into a, a, the club president role for the past year. Um, so it's uh, afforded me a, a larger scope of environment with the club. And cool. Adam? I am the head coach. Uh, I've been a coach in rugby for a few years in Madison. This is the third year of involvement with the team. I was an assistant uh, during the year that they, we won the national championship, and I've been the head coach for the last two seasons. Very cool. Now, I'm curious to know how each of you got involved with playing rugby, because it's not something that maybe the average person you talk to and they say, yeah, well, I, I played rugby. Uh, tell us how you got involved with rugby. Well, my involvement started a friend who played in high school. Uh, when he started uh, as a student at UW, he convinced me to show up. And uh, we practiced from 10 p.m. to midnight at the McLean Center at UW. And from practice number one, I was addicted. So I took the route that a lot of people do, is learning in college. Sure. But and, and at, at the other route that some people take, me, I grew up in Madison. My dad played rugby throughout the 1980s in Madison. And so I basically grew up with knowing about the sport. I started playing when I was you know, in high school and have, have since transitioned through college into playing at the level we are now. So Adam and I really came about the sport two different ways, but you know, we've, we've since stuck with it for for many years now. 
So you were kind of just uh, immersed in, in I was, movie, so to speak. I was. Yeah. Not too much. Not too much that I didn't want to stay a part of it. But right. It was a good. It was right. a good immersion. Very cool. Now, Wisconsin Rugby Club has been around for about 50 years now. Yeah. That's an incredible history. Um, what sort of impact is the Wisconsin Rugby Club having on the Madison area right now? Yeah, it's you know we have a great history. We we played our games for uh, the club played its games in many locations in Madison for many decades. But now we have a home. Mm -hmm. We have a home in Cottage Grove. Um, we own our own eight-acre facility. Um, it really is the headquarters of rugby in the state and in the Midwest. We draw over 2,000 players and 12,000 fans every year to Cottage Grove and, and to the Madison area um, for events. So it's uh, afforded us that we have a great history that has really kept people around and people involved that really have um, allowed us to make an impact in the area. And, and Cottage Grove has certainly been welcoming to us. We're happy to have a home there. Um, but you know, as Adam mentioned, the university has a great impact downtown and there's high school clubs all over. So we really have pockets of area and, and Madison is you know the great headquarters it is as a state so yeah so this isn't something that's you know real small I mean this is something that's growing and continue to gain more popularity definitely yeah definitely every growing. season every season more and more yeah that's great <laughs> that's great who, who plays rugby for the Wisconsin Rugby Club we predominantly we get people who learned or played in college at least there's mm -hmm. more and more high school programs so uh, we most people that show up are experienced and we get a huge amount from both uh, local UW whether UW Madison or the other UW satellite schools and also uh, foreign or, uh, or other co colleges in the country uh, epic systems and other large employers bring probably one-fifth to one-quarter of our to total playership so every season there are people that show up played in college work in the area and moved here for that and become a member of the club Wow, so people coming from all over the world, settling yep. here in Madison, yep. and then coming to Wisconsin Rugby Club. Yeah, Ep Epic is our greatest recruiter. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. So speaking of rugby, as far as it, uh, how it fits into the scope of the rest of the world, how, how big is rugby no. in the other parts of the well, world? That, that is, that it, I mean, you talk about people coming to, to Wisconsin from places. I mean, we have people that have just come over from England this past fall. Mm -hmm. And so they come to Wisconsin, and then in England, you know, rugby is the tackle sport that everyone follows. You know, many parts of the world, it is very equivalent to the Green Bay Packers. And so the people who aren't following soccer, the ones who are involved with the tackle and the, 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 that type of sport are rugby fanatics. And so when they come here, they're looking for rugby. You know, they seek us out. They, they're, they've been a part of the environment el elsewhere in the world. And so we get people from all over that it, it's, it's their sport. I mean, you know, it'll be similar to us going somewhere and trying to find American football or play basketball. So those types of guys come in and they bring some diversity. I mean, they all have different international you know, experiences and it really adds to our environment here in Madison as well, just because of the, the international flavor that comes in both from working and from people going to graduate school, so. Very cool. In 30 seconds or less, can you tell us what is on the rugby horizon? <laughs> Well, we just uh, sadly had our last game of the season cut short by weather. It was supposed to happen in Minneapolis next week, but we finished 9-0. and And so we're leading our division. We're unbeaten so far. We have the playoffs in the spring, and we're going to train during the wintertime. So, and we, we spend time in the wintertime being involved in Cottage Grove in the, in the winter parade. And we, uh, we watch rugby usually Saturday mornings at Cooper's Tavern on the square. It's usually the evenings in Europe when the games are on here in the morning. So... That's where a lot of people who don't play come out and watch with us and uh, you know, spend time together in a more social environment um, if hitting somebody on the field isn't <laughs> your thing. <laughs> Max Zukowski and Adam Thimming, thank you so much for coming out here today. We love having you. They're from the Wisconsin Rugby Club. That's all for Talk of the Town for today. We'll see you next time. <laughs>